Welcome back, and uh, in this video I'm going to talk about quadratic, or how to solve equations using the quadratic formula. It's a very popular method of solving quadratic equations. So here we go. Now in the middle of the screen what I have here is the actual quadratic formula, but I'll read this first. If a quadratic equation is in standard form, so that means if I have ax squared plus bx plus c, so the x squared is first, then I have the b, then I have the c, and it's set equal to zero, then the solutions or the roots, depending on how you want to say it, are going to be here. So this this formula here gives us um, basically what I have to do is plug in the A's here, the B's here, and then the C's right here. I only use it once. Use the C right there. And if I plug those numbers in and then add, subtract, multiply, divide, do all those things correctly, I can find the solutions for any quadratic equation. Okay. Now this is a very handy formula to use because if I have a very complicated equation, then um, I just plug in the numbers, figure out what it is. It's, it's relatively straightforward. Okay. So I'm going to do two examples for this. Uh, the first example that I have here is quadratic functions with real zeros. Now what that basically means is there's real numbers and then there's imaginary numbers or real numbers and complex numbers. Okay, so in mathematics we have different distinctions for numbers, we have different categories for numbers. In this one we're just going to get some real solutions, we're going to get some real numbers when we solve this. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to set this equal to zero. Now. Um, as you can already tell, it is kind of already set equal to zero. It's set equal to f of x, but I can I can rewrite it: 2x squared minus 16x plus 27 equals zero. Um, now the reason that you do that is just to make sure everything is in order, everything is where it's supposed to be. Uh, you got your x squareds here, then your x's here, and then your constants there. So we have the a number, the b number, the c number. So let me label those. We have the a number here, we have the b number here, we have the c number here. Now those, that A, B, and C number, we're going to use that. I'm going to plug that into the quadratic formula for or to solve. Okay, so over here, I'm going to write the quadratic formula. X equals, now this is something you should just commit to memory. Uh, it's such a useful formula. You're going to use it in a lot of your different math classes. Um, so this is something you just should commit to memory. Okay, X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2 a. Okay. Again, just a handy little formula to memorize. Okay. Uh, depending on your teachers, um, sometimes they let you have note cards. Sometimes they write the formulas on the board. Sometimes they give you a sheet. Whatever the case is. Again, this is the one that you should just memorize. Uh, it's so useful in everything that you do. Okay. Uh, especially in your future classes. So anyway, um, I'm just gonna plug in the a's, b's, and c's. Just plug them in. So in this case, I have negative b. So this is actually a negative negative 16. So that's actually going to make it positive. I'll still put it in there, but it's actually going to make that 16 positive. Okay, but you still want to plug it in there so you can see why it's a positive 16. Anyway, um, negative negative 16 plus or minus the big square root of negative 16 squared. Okay, now it's not quite as as, as important to put in the negative there because then if, even if that number is negative, you're going to square it to get a positive number. So you don't necessarily need it all the time. Uh, 4 times a, a in this case is 2, and times c, c in this case is 27. Okay, and then all over 2 times a, 2 times 2, which is eventually going to be 4. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we got to do just, all the rest of this is basically just arithmetic. Okay, so now x is equal to positive 16 plus or minus the big square root, see if I can do some mental math here, uh, 16 squared is 256, 256, now it's really going to test me here. Uh, this is uh, 4 times 2, which is 8, and then 8 times 27. Uh, 8 times 20 is going to be 160, 160, and then uh, yeah, 8 times 20 is going to be 160, and then 8 times 7 is 56, 56, so that's going to be... Um, 216, so minus 216, all divided by 2 times 2, which I said earlier was 4. Okay, um, so now I'm going to do a little bit of racing here to make this kind of nice and, nice and neat. So as you go over this, I notice that some of these numbers are going to be nice and neat. So I got 16, I got a 4. 256 minus 16, that's simply just going to be 40. 40, yep. So x 
is equal to 16 plus or minus the square root of 40 all over 4. Now, I said that this, this was nice and neat. It kind of is, but the square root of 40, we actually don't know what that is. So we actually got to simplify that just a little bit. Um, so it's not going to be as nice and neat as I said it was. Got a fib there. Um, but uh, we will be able to get some exact answers here. We won't get numbers like 5 and negative 17 or something like that, but we will get an exact answer here. Um, but what we need to do first is we need to reduce this square root of 40. Actually, I'm running out of room down here, so I'm actually going to move everything up here. Okay, so bear with me on the space that I have. So what I'm going to do now is x equals 16. Now, 40 is 4 times 10, uh, so I'm going to reduce that to plus or minus 2 root 10. Okay, so 40 is this, you can also reduce, uh, split that up into the square root of 4 and the square root of 10. Now the square root of 4 is 2, square root of 10 we just leave there. Okay, and then f divide by 4. Okay, now, now as you look at this, you might think, oh, okay, I might be done. Or you might also think, oh, hey, I can, I can reduce some numbers here, right? Now, be very careful with this. This is a mistake that's, that, that a lot of students make here is that they'll just, re, re, they'll just divide the 16 and the 4, and they'll totally forget about this 2 over here. Um, if you're going to reduce, you've got to reduce everything. If you're going to divide, you've got to divide everything. So this has to be 16 divided by 4 and 2 divided by 4. Um, so there's a couple different ways to do this. You can actually just divide those. So take x equals 16 divided by 4 is 4, and then 2 divided by 4 is going to be 1 half. So that's one way to write this. Now, this is not a form that you will probably see a lot of your teachers or a lot of books, any, any answers from books that you might see. They probably won't write it like this because a lot of times they don't like fractions like this. Instead, what they, how they could write this, how they could write this is... Um, Instead of just taking everything divided by 4, what they'll do is they'll reduce by some common factor. So what they'll do is they'll just reduce by some common number. So 16, 4, and 2, all these numbers are divisible by 2. So I'm just going to divide by 2, divide by 2, and divide by 2. Okay, so that this right here is going to be the most common way of writing your answer. Okay, that's going to be the most common way of writing your answer. Now, this bottom one is still technically correct, but that one you won't see very often simply because, well, it's a little bit messy with that one half on the outside there. Um, so that's usually not how it's written. Most of the time, we like to write these as single fractions. Here's my numerator. Here's my denominator. That's how we usually write that. Okay, but now, as I said before, those are two real numbers. Those are two real numbers, um, two real solutions that we're going to get. Now, again, you can see why it's two numbers. 8 plus the square root of 10 divided by 2 and 8 minus the square root of 10 divided by 2. Um, that's going to give us two different solutions there. Okay, so that's that's uh, quadratic functions. Uh, that's uh, using it to get real solutions. Now I'm going to do another example where we actually get complex solutions, where we actually get, um, we're going to get some imaginary numbers here. Okay, so same directions. Find the zeros of the following function using the quadratic formula. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the big square root of b, b squared minus 4ac, all of this over 2a. Again, this is something you should just memorize. So my a number in this case, now I don't have to rearrange it, so I'm not going to write it like I did last time. My a number is 4, my b number is 3, and my c number is 2. Okay, so I'm just going to start solving this. All right, so I'm just going to start plugging in numbers. x equals negative 3 plus or minus the big square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 4 times 2 all over 2 times 4. Okay, just plugging in my A's, B's, and C's. As I was writing that down, I was looking back and forth, back and forth, left and right, left and right, figuring out, okay, my A number is 4, my B number is 3, my C number is 2. I had to look back and forth to find them. Okay, so simplify this out a little bit. Uh, negative 3 plus or minus the big square root of... Okay, let me not make that big. Okay, big square root of... Uh, 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times 4, which is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. Okay, now, for those of you who know about imaginary solutions, there it is. You can automatically see right there we're going to get imaginary solutions. 9 minus 32 is going to be a negative 23. 
negative numbers underneath the square roots give me imaginary solutions. So you could automatically see right here and now uh, I'm going to get imaginary solutions. In this case, complex solutions. Okay, uh, 2 times 4 on the bottom here is going to be 8. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to keep going through this. Keep doing the process. Okay, keep simplifying. Okay, x equals negative 3 plus or minus the big square root of negative 23 all over 8. Now, in the previous example, we were able to simplify. We were able to reduce some numbers. In this case, nope, we're not able to reduce anything. Um, now, there's 23 over here. Again, th that's, that's, that's not going to reduce or anything like that. But the negative inside kind of will. Okay, so I'm actually going to go over here with my final answer. X is equal to negative 3 plus or minus. The square root of a negative number is an imaginary number. So what, I, what that basically does is you take the negative part, you bring it out, and you make it imaginary. You make it this, this I kind of look, variable looking thing. Okay, so it's going to be negative 3, negative 3 plus or minus I root 23 all over 8. And that is the solution you're most commonly going to see. Another way that you could write this, it's not, it just looks a little bit different. It's not wrong. It just looks a little bit different. Uh, you can actually take, um, let me rewrite that. There you go. You can actually divide everything by 8. So you get negative, uh, negative 3 eighths here. And then I root 23 over 8. You might see the solution like that. Um, but that one's not more, more, more commonly used. Simply just because uh, it's, it's messy. It's got a bunch of fractions in it. It's just messy. This one is, is cleaner. It's nicer. Everything's kind of one fraction. You've got your numerator up here, your denominator down here. This is kind of easier to work with than, than two fractions down here. But anyway, all right, so that is, those, those are your complex, complex zeros. You've got some real numbers, like negative 3 and 8 in here. And then you've got your imaginary numbers, this i root 23. Okay, so you've got some real numbers in there and imaginary numbers. That's what makes a complex solution. Okay, all right, I think that's it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video of going over quadratic formula. It's, uh, it, it's one of the better formulas to use. And again, please just, just memorize it. It makes life a lot easier, uh, makes your math life a lot easier. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something today, and we'll see you next time.